One of the drawings that I'm most proud of is this drawing here called August. What I really enjoyed about it was problem solving for the elephant skin texture. I've drawn elephants before, I really enjoy drawing them. I love the animals so much. Yeah, they're just these massive, wonderful creatures and they're so beautiful to draw. The skin texture is exquisite to just like dive into. So I thought I'd make a video just kind of going through some of the headspace I was going through while drawing August. Also, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, but I'll tell you more about them a bit later. So this is my drawing August. It's one of my favorite drawings. It's got a lot of simplicity to it, but also a lot of gravity, which I really love. The point that I'm starting off at, I've already done a bunch of work, but I wanted to particularly talk about doing the skin texture of the elephant. I start off with just mapping out some of the dark areas. I'm using a 9B pencil here, and I'm just trying to get a sense of the lines of the wrinkles. These aren't straight lines. I'm gonna probably mention this a couple times, but with this section, I'm mapping it out using small circular mark making. I find this just easier to blend in a more uniform kind of way. I wanna try and avoid any hard lines that might feel kind of artificial or man-made. Once I've made a couple marks, I'm gonna go into it with a saturated blending stump. I'm using a blending stump that I've used for loads of other drawings. The reason I'm doing it here is just because fresh, clean blending stumps are really nice for blending in lighter areas. So when I'm doing something with dark areas, might as well just use a dirty blending stump. This also just adds a little bit of extra graphite, so my blending from a dark tone is a little bit easier. I'm really just trying to tease things out here. I'm not trying to make any bold marks, I'm almost just experimenting and testing the waters with the dark tones. Then if I'm happy with how it's come through, I'm going to move over it with some cotton wool to try and get a base tone going. Finding the mid-tone is super important, this is kind of your benchmark. You can get a sense of the volume of the shape that you're creating, you can try and figure out how the light is hitting the larger areas rather than getting lost in the details. From the space tone I can then go into the darks a little bit more, make them a little bit richer, and now we're starting to pull out some highlights with a kneadable eraser. Every time I do a new drawing, I always have to re-gauge how much value I can pull out with the kneadable eraser. There are so many different variables that affect this, like paper, humidity, all that kind of stuff. So I have to try and figure this out every single time. It's always slightly different, but that's why I'm doing a small section now and trying to see if I can repeat this section throughout the whole elephant's head. Doing this is so rewarding. You can start to pull out really random shapes and fill them in with a bit of shadow and start to create a bit of an organic feel. Um, you also don't have to stick so closely to your reference. You can start to break away a little bit, which is always fun. I'm happy with how those first couple wrinkles went and I'm gonna start moving on with this routine. I call this finding the pattern. So I feel like I've started finding the pattern of the elephant skin and I'm gonna start just repeating this as I move up the head. Again, using cotton wool after I've applied the darks to try and get my mid-tone. Going back in with my 9B pencil, firstly just to get it a little bit darker, but also to refine some of the shadow shapes to make them a little bit sharper. When you're using a blending stump, it softens everything, and sometimes you don't want everything to be soft. You do sometimes need a hard line from time to time, depending on the lighting. I'm always using my blending stump to soften my pencil marks. Sometimes I'll even just draw directly with the blending stump if it's saturated enough. We're moving further up the elephant's head, so I've shifted over to a mechanical pencil. This section has finer details and they're not as stark and harsh as the details lower down. I was using a 9B there. My mechanical pencil is a 2B, so it's a little bit lighter. I just really enjoy getting into a flow with a mechanical pencil. I have to sharpen it less, so it's easier for me to get lost in the details and just enjoy that time a little bit more. Again, I'm using the same routine. I've applied a little bit of graphite with my pencil and now I'm moving over it with cotton wool to soften it and get my mid-tone. Depending on how well I've applied the graphite, I might choose to blend in that graphite with a blending stump. Otherwise, I might just go straight in with a piece of cotton wool to get that mid-tone. I've got my mid-tone, so I'm gonna use a saturated blending stump now and draw directly onto it and get some subtle tonal changes in the skin. Again, I'm just looking for the organic shape that the wrinkles in the skin are creating and trying to keep them from looking artificial. I really love the slow shot of the sun moving across the drawing. It kind of just reminds me these things take so much time. It's really important to not rush this process. We're doing a lot of thinking while we're trying to draw these things and so you're problem solving constantly and things aren't gonna always look great. So knowing that after a couple hours, it's gonna be looking a lot better than what it's looking right now is, is an important thing to keep reminding yourself. At this point, I'm really starting to get into a flow. I feel like I've kind of cracked the texture of the skin and I can start getting a little bit more detailed, a little bit more intense, especially further up on the face where the wrinkles become a little bit tighter. 
Now we're moving on to the forehead and here comes a whole new texture, a whole new bunch of problems to solve. So I'm going in again carefully and curiously. I'm applying cotton wool, getting my base tones very softly, making sure that if I need to, I can erase again. What I'm trying to do here is map out the shadows so that I can get a sense of whether it looks right or not. If I feel like I've broken the illusion of the light coming from one side, I'll just erase it and start over. Fortunately, I didn't do that this time, but it's always a risk. I've changed things up a bit, so I used cotton wool first this time to get an idea of the larger shapes, and now I'm going back in with some pencil to get those darker shadows and textures. Alternating between pencil and blending stump to try and create these soft shapes. Now with the details, I'm actually using my blending stump, which often isn't the most precise tool, but because I apply graphite so softly, I can actually pull out really fine highlights, which is a lot of fun. I kind of like the routine I created with the forehead here, so I'm just applying it again on the left hand side, using cotton wool, getting my bigger shape, and then going back into that with some pencil, blending stump, and I'm going to pull the highlights out with my kneadable eraser. I was really happy with how this forehead came out. There's a lot of organic shapes happening here. I didn't really stick to the reference too closely and being able to break away just allowed me to get into flow a little bit easier. And now I'm just mapping out the side of the elephant's head and moving into the ears. This is a large area that's in shadow, so I'm bringing out my graphite powder, my 9B pencil, and I'm just mapping this area out with quite bold marks. This is a whole new section with a whole new bunch of textures to try and problem solve again. So even though I'm working boldly with a lot of graphite powder, I'm trying to be experimental. I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna be happy with the marks that I'm making. So I'm working very tentatively, but I know that I have to dive in to get those dark tones in order to make this look good. So there's a little bit of a paradox here for me. Again, just using small circular shapes, I find these easier to blend and they remove the chance of creating any hard lines that kind of shine through the blending process. I've got the overall shape of the ear down, but now I'm still trying to get those folds of the ear, which are large, beautiful toned areas. So I've mapped them out with my 9B pencil and I'm blending them in. Then same as before, we're going over this with cotton wool, getting a darker base tone because this area, as I said, is in shadow. And from here we can see if we need to go to some of the shadows and how easily we might be able to pull out some of the highlights. Now I'm using my kneadable eraser. There's a lot of very fine veins in the ear and this was really cool to be able to just kind of randomly let the kneadable eraser create these shapes and see if I can get the illusion of these looking like veins. There's another little paradox here, which is these are fine details, so they need to be quite sharp, but at the same time, if they are too sharp, it breaks the illusion of them looking like they're veins. So the kneadable eraser does a good job of creating a softer type of highlight and then I'm using a smaller blending stump now to draw in the shadow. If it's just a harsh line between the shadow and the highlight, it'll actually look flat. So in order for these to look round, there needs to be a gradient between the shadow and the highlight. Going in with my mechanical pencil, just doing some tweaks, trying to get some areas to look a little bit sharper. I might choose to create a harsh line in certain points to give the illusion that it's a, a darker shadow, but generally I'm trying to keep things quite soft. Now we have this area with these beautiful wavy wrinkles at the top of the ear. I just went in straight with my 9B pencil. I was pretty confident about this area. I feel like at this point I familiarized myself so much with the elephant skin that I was feeling pretty brave. But one thing to remember is these aren't going to just be harsh lines. They're more like dots of joined shadow than one harsh line. This just helps remind us that the elephant skin isn't this smooth surface, but a very contoured and textured surface. Same as before, moving over with my blending stump, getting those tones and then erasing back in to get my highlights. I think I actually started losing a bit of confidence here. It didn't quite come out the way that I wanted it to. So you can see I often alternate between blending stump, pencil, eraser, and what I'm doing here is I'm kind of searching for a healthy medium. I know that I haven't found my formula, but if I just labor at it, I'm hoping that sooner or later I find something that works. Because I was falling around a little bit with the texture here, I ended up saturating the paper a fair amount with graphite. In order to get a harsh highlight back, I had to use my mechanical eraser. At this point, I wasn't as confident with mechanical erasers as I am now, so I use them quite often now, but back then I used them only when I felt like I'd ruined the paper a little bit and I needed to bring out a harsh highlight. Coming to the end of the journey, the top of the head, there's a lot of light here. I'm working much more subtly. I can apply a soft layer of graphite 
and just pull it out with a kneadable eraser really easily. I can also use my blending stumps directly, just very softly making shapes which read as texture that's been washed out with light. The other thing I'm trying to achieve with the top of the head here is the, the effect that it's moving out of focus, so primarily using soft tools gives me that blurry look. There were so many different aspects to this elephant's head, so many different textures that I really wanted to try and capture, and it was basically just like trying to find the solution to a problem every step of the way. This drawing was a lot of fun. It was by no means easy. It was quite a difficult one for me and it took a really long time as well. I think because there were so many different sections and different textures to try and solve, it drained my energy a lot, especially in times where it felt like I was falling around a bit when I was repeating myself to try and figure out how to achieve the texture. Those really suck and it's quite easy to walk away from the drawing table in those moments. Sometimes it's a good thing to do that, but generally you want to try and stay at it until you solve the problem. I really wanted to do this drawing justice, so there was a huge element of pushing through. The textures can really get monotonous and they take up so much time, so it felt like a gauntlet. Also the piece when it was finished, there was so much pride. The name even reflects the gravity that I was trying to convey through this artwork. One of the things that I really loved about it as well is that it was broken up into sections and I could feel the sense of accomplishment through each section, just hoping that I could maintain that with the next section and didn't bring it down by its weakest point. This drawing, like so many others, reminded me to enjoy the process. Being so set on the final goal would have made me exhausted, and being able to enjoy each successful solution to the textures helped me make it through this drawing. Before in this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. I've been working with them for a couple of years now and they played a huge role in my career, not only in helping me maintain this YouTube channel, but more importantly, early on in my career. I was looking for an easy way to showcase my work. It's so important for an artist or any creative to, to show their work online. I was looking for a way to build a website which didn't require me to learn HTML and spend hours and hours trying to put it all together and I felt that Squarespace did that effortlessly. I never had to patch or upgrade anything, I could register a domain with them and set up an online store and most importantly I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. Also every time I got stuck their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're looking at building a website give Squarespace a try and if you decide that you love them use the soft code and get 10% off your first purchase. I hope you enjoyed this little deep dive and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!